We say it all the time on the channel, your car is an incredible force multiplier. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Mexico City in Mexico. Nanook protective cases are my choice to transport firearms and other valuable items. I love the power claw latching system. Check out their cases in the link in the description. We kind of get a two for one here because you see this guy pulling into his garage and his door is shutting slowly. And you're gonna see these guys run up and try that door. Now we think these are the same guys that are gonna be in the next one because of the jacket with the sleeves and the white patches that the guy on the left is wearing. They didn't get in in this case. Now in the second one, what we see is we see a guy who is backing into his garage. If you go read the news stories I've linked in the description, there's some discussion as to whether this was a carjacking or maybe potentially a kidnapping. But when he comes into his garage, this one's about a half hour later, these five guys pile out of the car, stop it here so you can see the fact that the guy in the back seat there looks like he's wearing the same jacket. So it could be the same dudes. And as they pile in, we get a uh, look from inside the garage here. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see those guys pile in. And the second one in, the guy with the sleeves actually points a firearm here. And when he does, our intended victim gets the heck out of there. Now, if we go back to the outside, what's gonna happen? You can see at the back of the victim, victim's car, you are going to see him uh, run over that guy and now they're all kind of milling about going, what the heck man, where are we going and what are we doing? And, and our intended victim is going to back up a little ways and then finally power it the heck out of there and he is going to get out of there, leave these bad guys with just a bad case of regret for what has happened to their car and that is where this one ends. Boy, you know, when that guy had the car bumping over him, I bet you he rethought his life choices. If you want to support the work that we do here at Active Self Protection, one of the ways you can do that is just by going and saying thanks to our sponsors. Hit the link in the description every time you see one. Go to their social media space and tell them thank you for supporting Active Self Protection. So I think the lesson out of this first one is primarily to get a very strong garage door and a garage door that closes very firmly that they can't get into. You notice here, they're not able to get this door open. It will not be open. So then since they're not able to get in, they are not able to rob. So hey, a strong garage door is a good thing if these two are connected. Now the second one, I really think our first lesson here is in backing in when you're in an exposed environment like this. If you have you know, a little bit more space or whatever, or a gate on the outside may not be quite as important, but clearly here what backing in did for this intended victim is it gave him the ability to see before the guys were surrounding his car. If you can back into the garage and you're going to have to either back in or back out. So one way or the other, you're doing some backing may as well back in so that you can see what's going on outside. Yes, you're going to be looking into the back to back into the garage effectively and all that. But with modern backup cameras, not that difficult and gives you the ability to pay attention to your world. And that was critical here in his defense. Now then, our bad guys pile out, and the next thing that I really want to pay attention to is the fact here that we have no fewer than five bad guys. We have four get out of the car and one stay in the car as the driver. In all of the videos here on active self-protection, we find about a third of the instances, about a third of the defensive encounters of all kinds that we see here on the channel involve multiple attackers. That is a significant number. You should expect and plan to have to deal with multiple attackers. That way, if you don't, well then that's a happy happenstance. But if you do, you are prepared for it. And, and again, if you're gonna be an asper, if you are going to be an active self-protector, multiple attackers are the way. Now, now, they're gonna come in here and I wanna pay attention to the fact that the first dude is gonna jump in. Obviously, something is at stake here when the first guy comes in. Second guy comes in and immediately points a gun. This is clearly a deadly threat. Now, you know, some people, and I'm gonna guess a lot of people here on the channel, a lot of self-defenders say, well, I'll just draw my firearm and engage him. And he's only, you know, about maybe uh, nine or 10 feet away from the driver at this point. So if you had a firearm on you, I'm not saying that's a wrong answer. And clearly if you had that, it would be good to go. However, you know, uh, window glass, particularly windshield glass, does some crazy things to bullets and it makes things deflect in odd ways. So I think that the car is probably the better solution here and he doesn't hesitate, gets on the gas pedal and gets out of there. It's a deadly threat and so using deadly force to protect yourself and all these guys working in concert, absolutely the case. No problem. Secondly, I know people are gonna go, oh no, but look at the damage that he did 
to his car and to his garage door and all that. Friends, this guy just threatened your life. Number one, your life is worth far more than your stuff, far more than the insurance claim for what went down here. And so, you know, you have an insurance deductible to take care of that stuff. Just defend your life. It's definitely not going to be any cheaper to let these guys steal your car. So defend your property, defend your life, and get the heck out of there. I think the car was the right answer here. Now, let's talk about putting the guy under the wheels here for just a second. Clearly, all of these guys are acting in concert. They are all acting together as armed carjackers or potentially armed kidnappers. And that being the case, this is clearly a deadly threat. You can use deadly force to protect yourself against a deadly threat. And quite frankly, specifically here in the U.S., it does not matter what kind of deadly force you use to defend yourself against deadly force. The car is perfectly acceptable. I wouldn't feel morally bad at all about using the car. If he goes under the wheels of the car, that is his fault. As an attacker, he had absolutely no right to be there. And, and as an attacker, you have the right to defend yourself against him. And going under the car is okay. Now then, you notice here he gets stuck. And this is a problem with using the vehicle. And I'm not going to say that, that using the vehicle to escape the situation is flawless or foolproof. No, I think that it could be significant here in that he got stuck. Now he's going to have to back up, get stuck again, and finally get away. But this is a great reminder, if possible. Now, almost impossible in Mexico City. But if possible, I think that this is a great reminder for people to actually carry a firearm. And the reason that I'm going to say that is, if it's possible in your jurisdiction, when these guys here are milling about, we know at least one of them's armed and our good guy's stuck. Here's the place where you want to have a force multiplier in order to even the odds and defend yourself and stop that threat. The fact that he didn't meant he had to keep going with what he had. And I don't blame him for that. I'm not upset at him for that. But I am saying that I do recommend that people carry the best uh, force multipliers that they possibly can. And I think a firearm would have been the right choice in this instance, given that at least one of the attackers was armed with a firearm. Now, the fact that he didn't, again, this is Mexico. He's disarmed by fiat, I think is a wrong. But thankfully, the bad guys ran off. And, and even the bad guy who got ran over was able to run off, which is kind of a miracle to me. And our good guy got the heck out of the danger zone as well. He didn't just stick around. And that's our final lesson today. If you have a deadly threat in your vicinity, do not hang around to admire your work. Get out of the danger zone as fast as you possibly can. Get on the phone to emergency services. Get some help on the way, but get you and your loved ones to safety. Don't hang out and say, oh, hey, I just ran over that guy. Let's see if everybody's okay and let's examine the damage. No, get out of the danger zone and make sure that you are safe for you and your family. So a lot of stuff here about paying attention, about backing in about using your car effectively, about why I do say that having a firearm on you is an important tool and about getting out of the danger zone to cover your ASP.